Hi DIYers, Sterling with Alarm Grid here and today we're going to show you how to program your 6GB which is the wireless glass break detector for the Lyric security system. So the Lyric uh, is a great new system and it supports a whole new range of wireless sensors called 6 series sensors, very different than the 5800 series sensors. Um, these sensors have a wider range, about three to 400 feet back to the panel. They're also fully encrypted and bi-directional. They can talk to and from the panel and there's no way that someone could uh, jam or spoof the signals from these sensors. Uh, so a much more secure uh, communications between the devices in your house that protect your house and your wireless Lyric security system. So uh, while this system will be able to be programmed with the existing 5853 wireless 5800 series sensors or glass break rather, um, the 6GB is the best glass break to use with this Lyric system and um, we're going to show you how to program it. It's very easy. So. Just when you're, just like any Lyric sensor programming, um, when you first do your first installation uh, of your Lyric, you want to program the furthest sensor away from the panel. And when you do that, the system is able to kind of uh, initiate the best communications through the house between the sensors, where, which are actually uh, low band Wi Fi devices on the 2.4 gigahertz range. Um, and it will be able to kind of evaluate the network and the environment and get the best signal path from the devices back to the system. So we've already done that. We've learned in our furthest sensor away first and now we can comfortably learn everything else here right at the panel and then we can go test the devices at their intended location to be installed. Once we know they work in that location, we can install the sensor. So that's your general strategy when installing your Lyric system. These sensors also can be programmed remotely by your alarm monitoring company. So if they're offering to do that for you, you're just having to supply the MAC address. They can type everything into the system and push it down to the panel. Um, but if you're going to be installing it yourself as, as you know, a period of trial before you go live with the monitoring, it's certainly possible to learn everything into the panel and then your alarm provider can suck all that information up into the cloud and have access to your system to make further changes from there. So we're not going to show you that computer-based programming because as an end user, you're never going to do that. We're going to show you the programming of learning this sensor in right at the panel. So to do it, uh, very easy. We pop the cover so it's twist on the back plate from the front. And we have this little pull to connect tab. You never want to pull this tab unless you're ready to program the sensor at that time. And we're not quite ready because we're on the home screen. So first we do security, tools, and our installer code of 4112, 4112 is the default installer code, gets us into programming. If we hit program, now we can select zones. And you can see on the zone screen, we have new on one and two, that's for the hardwired zones. We're not doing any hardwired zones and most people using a Lyric won't use hardware, hardwire zones. So we just ignore one and two. If you click into one and hit edit, you'll see there's no serial number box and that would be your um, kind of tip that or, or hint that, hey, I messed up, I forgot that he told me to ignore one and two. And starting with three, you can program any of these zones to any of these six series sensors. We've already learned in our front door, which is our farthest away sensor. And so we're going to jump down to zone number seven. Um, we actually have uh, three doors that we're going to program, uh, a front door, the slider door, and a garage door. And therefore, um, we're going to go ahead and just use zone number seven for our glass break because we're going to use a motion. So we're going to kind of use this template that's in there and just jump to the next available zone, which is seven. And when we hit edit, we're on the screen ready to enroll the sensor. Um, however, one more step as always to learn in the serial number, you actually have to click where it says serial number. You have to tap on the screen to get into this level of programming where it's ready to learn in the sensor. And because we've patiently waited to pull our tab, it's very easy to enroll the sensor at this point. You simply open it up and pull the tab out. By doing so on the front, you can see this light flashes rapidly and we give it about 20 seconds. And you can see right on the screen, it pulled in the MAC address from the device. Um, I guess this, oh, there it is. So this MAC address 
on the devices on the back cover and you can see it actually learned it in. This is a glass break. It listens for audio uh, broken glass but tapping the sensor can fault it sometimes too. It actually just faulted in my hand just as I was describing that and basically it's uh, locked in its parameters. So we can see the MAC address is displayed. Um, you'll notice there's no loop number box on the 6 series sensors they don't use loops at all. All right, So every device is pretty much one action. Uh, on the video for programming the 6CT or the contact, the wireless door and window sensor, that's one device that offers similar functionality to a loop. They call it service, it's a little different. But whenever it's a 6 series device that's learned in that's not a contact, you'll see this loop box is empty. And that's because there's no option for putting a loop. You don't have to think about that. You don't have to wonder what a loop is. It makes it a lot easier. And now we can name it, all right? We're only gonna have one glass break in this installation. It's gonna go and protect this door from being smashed. This is in the dining room, living room. So we're actually gonna call it the dining room. If we hit D, we get the first word of the vocab for D in the custom library. If we then hit an I, we can jump to the first DI word, which happens to be dining. And we can go one further clarifying that it's a dining room. And because our dining room and our living room are kind of shared in this house, we do the same thing. L, I, V, down arrow. And now it, when it has an alarm, it'll say dining room, living room, glass break. When we call the police that there's been a break in on the glass break in the dining room, living room, when they come to evaluate the house, they have a better sense of where this break-in occurred and have that better information, especially if it's a dangerous situation when they're arriving. Uh, that extra bit of information of where the sensor lives in the house is very critical. You can see it auto-detected that it was a glass break, which is beautiful. We don't have to choose. We want to just leave it glass break. And then the response type, it went with the most commonly used response type for a glass break, which is perimeter. And so that just means it'll be armed in both away and stay. And when there's an alarm, there's no delay. Basically, because this is only triggering on broken glass, there should be no reason this triggers unless it's a false alarm. And therefore, you should not need any delays, entry or exit. You want it perimeter. You want it to sound the alarm immediately. And with alarm report set to yes, it'll actually transmit that alarm to the central station that's monitoring the system. If you didn't want those transmissions going out to the central station and you just wanted the loud noise in the house, you could select it to be no, but our purpose is we want this system monitored, we're selecting yes. Chime is disabled. Um, again, there's not really a fault for a glass break. Chime is great to protect doors or know that doors are opened. Um, on a glass break, it'll never fall because it's just either an alarm or a non-alarm. So you don't need a chime on a glass break. And then finally, supervision. We want it to be supervised. That just means we'll know if this is out of range or if it has battery issues. So it's actually sending periodic check-in signals to the panel, letting the panel know about the health of the sensor. And that way we know in advance if there's any issues with the sensor. And if we hit the down arrow, you actually can choose the sensitivity through programming, which is something brand new to the 6GB. Um, on the 5853 sensor, it was dip switch settings internally in the sensor that would tell it what sensitivity to use. On this system, it's actually selectable right here by a toggle. We want maximum sensitivity so that we're going to put this in the room on the ceiling and we're going to get the best range out to all the windows and the glass in the room so we have the best protection possible. If we had issues with false alarms, um, while we're in the house doing various things that aren't broken glass, obviously, then you would try to drop it down maybe to medium. If you still have false alarms, you go to low. And you just want to go make sure if you're going too low that you're then testing your glass break with our FG701 glass break tester. And then you would know for sure that broken glass here would sound this alarm up on the ceiling. And we lock in these settings by hitting save. And we're back to this zone screen. You can see just like when we did our front door, as soon as we have the six series sensor programmed, we're actually getting a visual indication of the battery health and the wireless signal strength health. So if you mixing 5800 series sensors with six series sensors, let's pretend this window is a 5800. That's why you're not seeing the battery or the RF indication or the supervised uh, 
wireless uh, signal strength that you do on the two 6 series sensors. So if you're ever wondering, hey, my 5 is programmed, but why isn't it showing me these icons? Just remember it's only going to show those icons on the 6 series devices. And if we exit to the home screen, we have a learned in glass break now. And we can try to fault it. Uh, you notice when I tap pretty hard on it, you get a fault 7 dining room and it goes back to ready to arm. So that's a quick and dirty way to just, without the tester, say, is this working? Obviously it's not hearing broken glass, but you know, tapping directly on the sensor like that is activating the fault and you can see that indication and then it goes away as soon as I stop tapping. So we know we programmed this in properly and we're ready to go install our 6GB uh, wireless 6 glass break detector uh, that we're going to use with our Honeywell Lyric system. So we hope you've enjoyed this programming video on the 6GB. If you have any questions on programming your Lyric glass break detector, uh, please email support at alarmgrid.com and make sure to subscribe to our channel as we'll be releasing a lot more videos all based around this great new revolutionary Lyric Honeywell security system.